Hi Dragons, I'm Ben. And I'm Marissa. Today we will be talking about news you need to know and the biggest things going on in the world. Astronauts are incredibly meticulous and detail-oriented, but even they misplace things sometimes. Just such was the case for a tomato grown in space, and misplaced. Jeremy Roth has today's Take a Look at This. Uh, Houston, we solved a problem. Call it the case of the missing space tomato. Crew members aboard the International Space Station confirmed a tomato grown in space that mysteriously vanished eight months ago has been found. The fugitive fruit was part of famed astronaut Frank Rubio's pet produce project and had been harvested and bagged, but ended up misplaced or possibly displaced by the lack of gravity. Rubio is no longer aboard, but says he was made the fall guy by his cohorts. I did not eat the tomato. Everybody thinks I did. I spent so many hours looking for that thing. Lo and behold, eight months later, the mater turned up and the saucy suspect Rubio was let off the hook. We can exonerate him. Uh, we found the tomatoes. Folks in Wisconsin were seeing red when a fleet of freewheeling Santa Clauses took over Madison's Capitol Square on a bevy of bicycles. It was part of the annual Madison Santa Cycle Rampage, where Kris Kringle-clad riders of all ages execute a festive four to five mile slow ride to benefit in part school safety programs. Finally, take a look at a Santa who's on a roll using American Sign Language to make sure everyone gets their holiday wishes granted. A Springfield, Missouri store hosted the signing Santa to meet with deaf and hearing impaired kids who can sometimes be left out of the holiday hoopla. It is so magical. Our kids so often don't have the opportunity to communicate with anyone directly, but to an idol like Santa Claus, who is so precious and so special and is all knowing to have direct access on a day like this is amazing. For take a look at this, I'm Jeremy Roth. A second, a second person of interest has been taken into custody in the murder investigation of a Detroit synagogue president. Samantha Wool was found stabbed to death outside her home in October. An initial person of interest was taken into custody a few weeks later, but was released after that. Sarah Michaels has the latest. It's been almost two months since Samantha Wall was found murdered outside her home here at Lafayette Park in Detroit. We still don't know who did it and why. Loved ones tell me that they hope that this person in custody is a sign that we will soon find out. These past two months have, have been a horrendous time. And according to those who knew Samantha Wall, also a very dark time. Sam Dubin served on the Jewish Community Relations Council with Wall and tells me those who knew her are yearning for more information behind the latest person of interest taken into custody in her murder. As it pertains to, to the Detroit police, more communication, the better. You know, sunlight is the best disinfectant. And the Detroit Jewish community, we have felt really in the dark through this process. There are reports out there saying the person of interest is a random stranger. Seven Action News sources tell us they're not sure of that just yet. Wall knew a lot of people, and they're actively looking into the person's connection to her. 40-year-old Samantha Wall was attacked and stabbed inside her own home on October 21st. She stumbled out of her home and collapsed dead. The case made national headlines with many wondering if the killing may have been charged by anti-Semitism. Detroit Police Chief James White has said there's no evidence to suggest that. If they can allow us to understand what motives perhaps are behind this, they say that there's no anti-Semitism and perhaps there might not be, um, but explain why, explain who the person is. The tragic loss of Wall comes at a time of great turmoil in the Jewish community. As many wait to see who this person of interest is and what answers they may provide, Dubin says they're thinking of Wall this Hanukkah, remembering her light with every candle lit. Well, that's who she was. I mean, she was she was a bridge builder between the Jewish community and the Arab community, the Jewish community and the Hindu community. She saw the best in people. And Detroit police say right before Wall was found murdered, she was at an area wedding where she was, quote, her normal, positive and pleasant self. Reporting in Detroit, Sarah Michaels, 7 Action News. 
Medical experts are gathered in Massachusetts Friday to offer guidance on how to prevent further harm in athletes when it comes to brain injuries. Clinicians, researchers from across the country, as well as doctors from the NFL, weighed in their uh, guidance. Some of the recommended guidelines are eliminating unnecessary contact to the head and neck area and penalizing players for such contact. The summit comes in amid an increase of attention on traumatic brain injury and chronic traumatic encephalopathy, or CTE sports. The participants also discussed a need on how to diagnose CTE in people who are living. CTE also only began, been formally diagnosed with an autopsy in brain donors who were suspected of having the condition. Google researched its 2023 year in search Monday. Here are a few of the results. War in Israel and Gaza topped this year's list of tra news trends in the U.S. and globally. Damar Hamlin, the D Buffalo Bills safety who suffered a devastating injury in January, topped the list of trending people and athletes. Barbie and Oppenheimer were the year's top trending movies. And the list also highlighted some of the people we lost this year, as people mourn the deaths of Matthew Perry, Tina Turner, and Sinead O'Connor. Police in California have arrested a man in connection with an alleged anti-Semitic attack. The alleged assault happened Saturday while a couple was heading to the Orthodox Synagogue. Young Israel of North Beverly Hills. Police say Jairus J. Saliji attacked a man in his 70s with a belt and yelled anti-Semitic statements at him. He then fled, but police quickly took him into custody. Saliji is facing charges for assault with a deadly weapon, attempted robbery, hate crime, and elder abuse. He is being held on $100,000 bail. Meanwhile, the victim was treated at the scene for a cut on his head. Police say there is no relationship between Salaji and the victim. A wildlife official made a rare find in southwest Colorado last week. A pied elk was seen among the group of elk. It's the whitish one in the back. A wildlife biologist spotted it during a big game classification flight. Rare... Wait. The piebald trait, the result of a genetic mutation, is found in about one of, out of every 100,000 elk. Piebald animals have a pigmented background of hair, scales, or feathers with a unique pattern of white or unpigmented spots. Unfortunately, the unique patterns make the elk easier for predators to spot and attack. Entertainment news now on movies, music, and Broadway. Here's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. Very good, very pleased to be in America, having a great time. Boy George is heading back to Broadway. The Culture Club singer is set to join the cast of Moulin Rouge the Musical from early February through mid-May. He'll play Harold Zidler, the owner of the Moulin Rouge nightclub. George's last Broadway appearance also involved a nightclub. 20 years ago, he wrote the music and lyrics and starred in Taboo, about the 80s London club of that name. An honor for Adele. The singer is set to receive the Sherry Lansing Leadership Award at the Hollywood Reporter's annual Women in Entertainment Gala. Lansing, a former studio exec, praises how Adele has paved the way for female artists to define their own voices and careers at a critical moment for women in music. The event is December 7th in Los Angeles. I remember the first time I saw a screening of one sequence from Toy Story. And I remember saying, that's the end of 2D animation. Pencils versus Pixels looks at how the traditional animation renaissance of the late 80s and early 90s was followed by the computer animation revolution, leaving 2D animators wondering about the future of their storied craft. The documentary celebrating both types of animation and narrated by Mulan herself, Ming-Na Wen, is now available on VOD. Drawn back to Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Well, this show has been fun. My name is Benjamin. And I'm Marissa. Stay tuned for next week for more of the news that you need to know. Have a good day, and as always, go Dragons. I know the dash.